So I've tidied up the patch that we were looking at earlier. Um, I've put the BPM to millisecond calculation that we did in this sub patch, uh, which obviously keeps it out of the way. Next thing we could do. Um, well, having produced some sound, um, and there are obviously various different ways you can do so using synthesis and sampling, some of which we've looked at, some of which we will look at. Um, a sort of uh, an easy way of earning points if you're working on the assignment for me, um, but also in general for you know getting the most out of Max, the likelihood is you'll be wanting to apply some effects to your patches. Um, and mostly these can be applied after uh, your main sound making engines. So in this case sampling or if you've built a synth. So we might look at things like uh, applying delay, um, applying filters. Uh, well, we've looked at one filter already in the reson object, but there are many others in Max. Uh, there's some other um, objects like degrade, um, and also Max will uh, work with VSTs, so you can use some processing uh, that is external to Max, um, but uh, you know, and apply that to your patch. Uh, we will look at VSTs, but I'm a little bit reluctant to spend too much time on that because it's a bit of a cheat, really. Anyway, for now, I want to look at means of producing delay in Max. Uh, so we'll do that using a, a separate patch for now. So there is such a thing as a delay object, well, as a delay um, without a tilde object, which applies a delay to control data. Um, and there's a delay for signal data. Neither of these are the, the objects that you want to do use to get the kind of delay that you'll be familiar with from kind of tap delay or recursive delay that you'll get in many plugins. For that, we want to introduce something called tap in and tap out. Now, the, these are two objects which are connected by, they're both MSP objects, but they're very unusual insofar as their outputs uh, are, if you notice, not MSP cables. So the cable between these two objects merely tells you that they are associated with each other. So in the same way as, say, a buffer and a, and a uh, groove object, you connect them by giving them the same name. Um, that doesn't work in the case of the, the uh, delay objects. You merely connect them up using these cables. Um, and that tells us that they are somehow connected. So why do you need two objects? Well, they both perform uh, two slightly different functions. They're both for the purposes of generating delay. But one of them is to store sound. Um, and one of, it is to, one of them is to play it back. The tap-in is a rolling buffer. So what you can do is you can give it a, a time duration of, I'm going to give it 10,000 milliseconds, and that is the amount of storage capability it has. So it will store 10 seconds worth of sound. But unlike a buffer, it isn't static. So it's always recording, and it will capture the last 10,000 milliseconds of sound that it received. And then the tap out will read from this buffer. You can specify a time duration, and what it will do is it will read into the tap in buffer, as it were, the last 1000 milliseconds that it recorded and play that. So, in combination, what these do is to delay a sound by 1000 milliseconds. But you need this tap in object to record that data so that tap out can play it back. And we'll see also why I need 10,000 milliseconds of data recorded in a minute. So let's, it's very simple sound to prove that this is working. Um, I shall make a gain object and an easy DAC output. So the click object simply produces an impulse. So you can hear that. And like I say, if I send that through the delay line, 
So I can have them connected concurrently, but of course anything that runs down this cable on the left-hand side will go to the output immediately. Anything that's going down to the right-hand one will be delayed according to this uh, delay line that we've got here. So, I'll... Okay, so we hear the first one obviously as soon as I click and then we hear the other one a second later. We could uh, actually uh, make that a little more obvious by sending one to the left channel and one to the right channel. There we go. Um, that's working with a, uh, a simple impulse, but it will work with any sound. So I can connect up uh, this object here, which is rather conveniently provided by uh, Cycling74. Um, and I can use one of its standard samples um, and we'll hear it delayed between the left and right channels. Uh, and it's as simple as that. So we have we have a, a means of generating delay. 